Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another Gunpla review and this one is a little bit different because this right here is the high grade Atlas Gundam, a kit that I have reviewed before back in 2017. So this isn't one of my normal reviews, this is a re-review from here on out being called a review. Now I have to say, the Atlas Gundam is one of my all-time favorite Gundam designs. It is ridiculous, absolutely unique looking when it comes to Gundams, and it's an extremely detailed design. And that is why this kit right here from 2017 just does not do it justice. So sadly enough, I didn't get to bring all of my Gunpla collection back from Japan with me when I came back in 2017, and this is one of the kits I really, really missed. So once it did actually end up getting a reprint, this had to be one that I rebuilt again. Now, like I mentioned, the color accuracy of this kit is extremely, extremely bad, mainly because this is such a detailed kit. So I decided to put a little bit of extra effort this time into it to have something worth popping on my shelf to represent the absolutely astounding Atlas Gundam. Also at the same time, my older reviews, especially back in 2017, I was incredibly, incredibly drunk while making them. So much so that once I was actually looking around at kits online, wanted to check if the Thunderbolt version of the Ground Gundam was any good or not, and lo and behold, I find a review of it uh, by me, which I do not remember ever, ever doing. Dark times. Litter. Whew, dark times. But yeah, the reviews from back then, they were not good. Not good at all. So this is a kit that I'd like to give a better review of. Now, a question to you guys is, is there any reviews I have done in the past that you would like to see done again? Maybe in more detail, more about the build, better footage of what the finished kit looks like. If there is, please drop it down there in the comments. And if I can find one, if I can fit it in, I most certainly will. Anyway, I wouldn't have been able to get this kit if it wasn't through Bai, so that is exactly where I bought this kit, and I will throw a link down there in the description. Now, let's wind on back to the build of the high-grade Atlas Gundam. So jumping right on into the build. Now I did review this kit before way back in 2017 when it came out, but I feel like those older reviews really don't kind of do these kits justice or give you a bit of a insight into the nitty gritty. Now this kit comes with a lot of color correcting stickers, like an absolute ton of them. So a lot of the yellow that you see, the lining on this kit does not come on the actual kit. So I'm gonna actually do that via painting this time just to get an atlas that looks like the atlas should. This right here is a pretty hefty high grade kit. We've got a grand total of 10 runners, not including the beam sabers. I absolutely adore the Atlas, that's why I'm building it again. And as usual, a high grade says to start at the torso, but I'm gonna start where I like to start, and that is with the feet. So the feet in here, these consist of just three elements, making them very simple, but at the same time, quite effective. We do have somewhat of a little bit of a hollow point in the back of one of those feet, but not too bad at all. Same here, it is a simple design, but everything works out and works out very, very nicely. So what that does give us is some rotation here, some at the back, which is independent, and a little bit of a toe bend. So like I mentioned, this kit right here doesn't have the greatest color separation of all time. Actually, it's quite bad in general, considering just how detailed this particular mobile suit is. So I'm going to be using a couple of Gundam markers, which are really simple to use. I'll pop them down in the description if you want to actually grab some for yourself. But what I'm going to be using is this standard Gundam yellow that came with the Gundam set, and this Gundam Mecha Grey for the kind of inner frame colory bits, which came with this particular set right here. So this particular gray marker is from the fine edge set, which means the tip of it is really, really, really small, which makes it easy to use, especially on detailed parts like this. Actually, I wish that I had a yellow variant of this for this review, but I don't. Basically, you just paint this on to the areas that are meant to be in gray, just like so, and it goes on super, super easy. So where there is color separation on the yellow in this kit makes you really just wish this was everywhere because it is so nicely, nicely layered. So when it does come to the actual lore or the backstory of the Atlas right here, this is a kit with some experimental joints based on underwater Xeon mobile suit. So it's got these really cool circular style joints. This is something I always wanted to see in Master Grade, but I guess this kit came out around the time when Bandai was really given up on the, well, MG line. However, as far as high grade kits go, one that is so super detailed, they did a very good job. 
considering the amount of color separation that would have been required to actually do this. The yellow here did require a little bit of gray. It's not a lot. There are stickers included. And if I pop the build up on the screen there of what I did originally back in 2017 when I reviewed this kit, I just did it with nothing on it if I recall correctly. No stickers, no anything. It still looks decent enough. So yeah, the leg here assembles in elements. That is the foot, then the lower leg, the knee unit, upper leg with armor on it. This is the only thing that actually makes it the left or the right leg. And finally, then we do have a waist unit ball that pops up in here like so. So a very nice design right here on this kit. So moving up through the Atlas now, and we've got this kind of like three segmented system for the waist unit. So that's where the legs attach on. Actually, those are not for the legs. Those are for those massive units that attach into the kind of sub marine unit that comes with this. We've then got this part here, which is actually for the legs, which attaches on down below, just like so. That then anchors into the rear skirting armor like so. And like we saw with the knees, some parts of this have exceptional color separation, like these little panels, both on the rear and the front skirting. Again, some more tiny bits of color separation like this. The front skirting armor can be cut in two on the runner. This can make attachment a little bit awkward. It's a little bit of a balancing act. Then it all attaches together just like that. Thankfully, Whoa. No painting or stickers required. I will mention you can see to some hollow parts back there. It'd be nice if there was a little bit of a gray backing piece to put in there, but sadly, there is not. So when you do get the legs on there, there's a down and up axis of movement right here and a side to side swing up and down as well. This kit, once finished, has superb articulation. So now moving on to the torso, and I will mention a lot of this kit, even a lot of the inner frame is in this kind of bluish color. This does mark very, very easily when you snip it out. You're going to get quite visible knobs like the one you're seeing right there. So you're going to have to take some care while snipping it out. So moving down a little bit more, and this is a part of the body, the torso, that has a ton of color and accuracy. So if you're going to be painting or doing the stickers on this, it's going to take a little while to get a finish. So I'm going to go with the Gundam marker once again, just to avoid the stickers. This should be simple enough to just get gooed up and finished. So when it comes to detailing up a Gundam, I usually take the fastest possible approach that gives you the best results for the time put in. So what I do is I usually blob on the Gundam marker like so, especially in super detailed areas like this, and then file or scratch off the excess. It's not perfect by any means, but it gets it done pretty quick. It works in some places well, not so much here. For me, the High Grade Atlas is one of my all-time favorite High Grade kits, and the only real letdown here is the color accuracy, considering how detailed the Atlas design is. So when it comes to the actual joints and everything on this, it is very, very nice and builds up nicely. Where there is color separation, like the V in the chest, is done nicely too. For the panel lines in this kit, I do what I do all the time. That's the flow style Gundam marker in gray. I also used some black all around the kit. And I do recommend doing this before painting if you're detailing up with a Gundam marker because this stuff doesn't clean off Gundam marker very well, but it's easy to put the Gundam marker over the panel lines. Now this part for me is very interesting. When it comes to the Atlas Gundam, only about half of the build is actually the Gundam itself. The other half is the mass amount of equipment and weaponry that comes with this mobile suit. When it comes to the build of the sub legs, this is very, very simple. Now I will mention there's a lot of color inaccuracies here too. This gray missing off the main leg units and the arms that attach into the waist should predominantly be in white. I didn't do that because painting white Gundam markers doesn't always really turn out the greatest on large areas and I thought it looked fine as it was. When it comes to the rest of the equipment, it is very simple. First off, we've got the submachine guns. There is two of these. They're very, very simple and just are two parts that attach together. Now, these aren't color accurate, but I'm not going to be displaying this kit with them, so I didn't do them. The shield is simple as well, just one big gray piece. We've got some white venting up front and a handle around back. And finally then is the rail guns. Now these I will be displaying with this kit so I decided to paint them up a little bit in the very simplest way possible. The inside of these is meant to be in grey. The rest is the yellow that we have but that's a massive noticeable bit of colour and accuracy. So what I did was super simple. I just masked off the bottoms of these where I didn't want any paint, threw them down on a work desk, sprayed them with a primer top down from this perspective, then hit them with a grey top down from this perspective too. Then grabbing some sanding sticks, I sanded the grey off of everything except for where it is. Once again, this is a very simple way of doing it. It only takes about five minutes, not including the drying times with both paints. 
simple, effective, and works very, very well for recessed details. As a collector, personally, I like to keep my Gundam model kits as close to out-of-box build as possible, while still representing what they're meant to represent in the anime, so that's why I don't paint everything, just the necessary aspects. Now this is a kit that does include some sticker style decals. Now I'm not a huge fan of sticker style decals. I'm not sure if there are Atlas Gundam ones available. I don't have them. So I decided to go for a couple of water slides from other kits. That is from the real grade high new Gundam and some of these ones here from the mobile suit Gundam side stories multi-use one. Between the two of these, I had some nice caution decals as well as some nice Earth Federation Space Force logos, both of which work well with the Atlas, so to me, a decent substitute for the stickers that came inside of the box. Now, let's check out how it turned out. Jumping right on into the aesthetics, and finally there is the high-grade Atlas Gundam with a little bit of extra effort put in. Now, I will mention for the most part the details I put onto this, I did do based off of the stickers. There is a lot more yellow on the high-grade, or should I say on the Atlas mobile suit itself than there is on the high grade plus its stickers. It's a ridiculously, ridiculously over the top design. One that, like I've mentioned already, I would love to see in master grade or real grade where all of that detail can be replicated. But anyway, this right here is what we've got. The Atlas really does have it where it needs it. The proportions on this, for the most part, besides one aspect, are absolutely phenomenal. All the detail is actually molded into this to paint yourself if you do put the time into it. But like I mentioned, the out-of-box build, which looks a little bit like this right here, isn't the most impressive high grade around when it comes to the aesthetics. Anyway, there it is side by side with the actual art of what the Atlas should look like. Now, Take this with a grain of salt because what you see in the anime isn't necessarily always what you see in the line art. But as you can see, this kit, the only thing that's really standing out a little bit to me at least, is the feet on this are quite large. But this is a kit that does have a whole lot of equipment, so hopefully that will work out well in the end. So if you pop the Atlas down beside another Gundam, you can see that it is quite a small mobile suit in comparison to something like the Ariel ride here. And also if you do take a modern kit like the Ariel, the color separation is much more thought out, much more smarter, layers up nicely than something like this ride here. Again, I would love to see this done in 2023 tech. And another couple of Witch from Mercury kits just for the sake of the size comparison, there is the high grade Rubus Ur and the high grade Mikhailis. So as you can see, Atlas, a little bit on the small side. So now jumping into the accessories, and this is where the high-grade Atlas Gundam truly shines. There is so much inside of this box, Thunderbolt style. So what we've got is the pair of sub legs, which are absolutely massive. We've got the railgun, also massive. The shield, guess what, that is also massive. And on top of that, we've got a pair of submachine guns with alternate holding hands, a pair of beam sabers, and a couple of base adapters. So yeah, this is one hell of a set of accessories. So when it comes to action base adapters, you can use any action base with the standard top or should I say standard stand like this right here, which is Good Smile Company's simple stand with this kit. The first base adapter can be a little bit on the confusing side, mainly because I did not see how to use it in the manual. Like I could have potentially missed it, but you're actually able to slide this up between the rear skirting armor, just like so, and that holds on there. It then just pops in just like so, and that does mean you have a little bit of an adapter attached round back all the time like this, which from some angles you will notice. So when it comes to the beam sabers in here, these are generic pink beams. When it comes to the handles, these are a little bit smaller than your average Gundam handles, probably due to where they're stored. And popping these into the hands is super simple. They just pop in like so, testing out that reverse, testing out the reverse grip too, pops in like that. Now I will mention the standard grip with these particular beam sabers is really, really, really weak. So if I just even just angle up the arm like that, they fall out, so not great. Funnily enough, hold them backwards, holds on fine. When the beam sabers are not in use, just unplug the beams from the handles, and these handles can be stored very, very nicely. That is up in the shoulders. We've got an opening armor panel that opens like this. You pop the beam saber handle into a little clip inside, and it all closes up flush. This is on both sides, and this is very, very simple, but very effective. So next up in here, we've got the assault rifles. So we've got a pair of these, and these are some of my all-time favorite designed 
rifles for with a Gundam. They're just so, so cool. We've got the standard barrel up top. We've got the grenade launcher down below. These attach into the hands super simple. These are your usual high grade style hands. And when you attach them on, they look absolutely phenomenal. Once again, these are very simple, just made out of two parts. The detail is absolutely phenomenal, but it is meant to be in a two-tone gray, not the standard gray here. But they do look very, very nice. I'll also mention that these are meant to be able to be stored in the front segment of the sub legs. That is this front segment right here with the line down it. That is meant to open up and the sub arm is meant to be stored inside like this diagram right here. But sadly, that does not happen on this high grade right here. Total missed opportunity. So now moving on to the sub arms themselves. Now these have a multitude of points of articulation. Now not as many as it implies. We've got one down here which moves like so, can also rotate. Next one then is right here so that I can bend like so, no rotation. And finally we've got this part up here which attaches onto the hips and that has a little bit of in and out and that's all on that. On the actual units themselves, the thrusters move like so. I will mention at this point there is another variant of this kit available and well, I'll leave that till the railgun actually. So attaching these on is quite simple. I will mention I said there was no rotation on this part right here. There most certainly is. And these attach onto those cylinders on the side skirting. So that just pops on like so. And then the exact same onto the other side. Pop it onto that cylinder. Nice and secure. Just like that right there. Now posing these can be completely counterintuitive and a little bit downright difficult at times. The reason for that being, not every joint you see on it is a joint like I mentioned. You'd expect to be able to rotate and readjust everywhere, but you cannot. There's only specific areas of articulation. For example, if you want to flare them outwards away from the robot, that's done at the side skirting armors, and you almost turn things the opposite way that you feel like that you would. Eventually, you may or may not get the hang of them, but once they are in a pose, they do look ridiculous. They add a nice level of detail. Like I mentioned, the arms should be predominantly in white where there is no joints, but that is not color accurate in this kit right here, but still look absolutely mesmerizing, and the sculpt and design, it's all there. So the next thing we'll be taking a look at in here is the railgun. Now, the first thing you might be noticing about this is, well, that doesn't look like the way that I remember it, unless you're a manga reader. So what you're seeing right here, this is not the bandit flower version of the railgun that you would have seen in the OVA anime. That actually looks like this. And that variant of this kit does exist too. That is the bandit flower version, which is P Bandai. What I'm looking at right here is the standard release version, which of course is easier to get to some degree. And this comes with the manga version of the railgun. Personally, I do prefer the one in the actual OVA, so I'll be on the lookout for that sometime in the future. Same goes with the mobile suit. It's got more white and light grays on it than what we've got right here. Now, like we would have seen during the build, this is not what it comes out of box looking like. I did paint the inside segments there gray. I painted those little segments gray, and I did add a couple of decals up near the handle just for a little bit of flavor. So what it does actually look like out of box should be more like this right here that you would have seen in my original review. So it is incredibly plain. It's just yellow, 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 yellow with a little bit of gray in the middle. So in order to attach this into the hand, we do have a little bit of a peg right there, which pops into the hand. So far, so good. The fingers then attach on top. Not too bad, seems to hold on good so far. Then that pops into the hand in a kind of two-point way. That's the standard hand attachment, just like so. As well as this little yellow segment, which attaches in underneath. This attaches the handle of the rifle to the rifle to the forearm of the Atlas Gundam, which means you've got an absolute rock solid hold right here with no issues whatsoever, even though this is an absolutely gargantuan weapon. Continuing on now through the equipment and next up here is the shield. Once again, this is quite simple. Nothing really moves here. We've got a handle segment round back and an additional locking segment for locking it onto the forearm of the Gundam. Attaching it on just involves attaching it into the hand and then attaching the hand into the wrist. This can be a little bit difficult, of course, because the size of the shield, but once it pops in, it holds onto it perfectly. This doesn't even have the additional part for holding it completely outright just yet. It just holds on naturally and rests perfectly. So I will mention getting this attached on this way is a little bit on the difficult side. You need to attach this attachment segment onto the back of the forearm and then you attach the hand onto the handle while this locks into the handle too, keeping it from rotating in the hand. That is what it looks like in the end and all of the effort is definitely worth it. That blade shield is huge, 
awesome and just looks fantastic with the rest of the bulk going on here. So besides what we've seen so far, there are two more modes these sublegs can be used in. The first is flight mode for in-atmosphere flight. In order to do this, you just have to realign these arms down towards the feet, flip around these armor segments right here, and they plug on into the feet like so. This works out very well. It actually is a lot easier to pose them like this than it was when we were trying to get them to the sides of the Gundam. And you can even move the legs around with these in tandem like they were almost, well, designed to work while attached onto the legs. This looks absolutely fantastic. Changes where the weight of the mobile suit is from up above to down below, and this looks iconically cool. Awesome. So the second mode then is the submarine mode. In order to do this, you need to flip the sub arms around again, bring them to the front, take the shield off of the arm, lock this into the bottom, which locks both sub arms together in a kind of boat kind of shape. Once you organize the Atlas Gundam into position, then this is what you get right here, ready for some underwater antics, just like we would have seen in the OVA. Once again, wrong railgun, but this is the one from the manga, and still looking absolutely phenomenal. So finally now onto the articulation and Overall, this is a very strong kit. Its build and its articulation was always its best aspects to me. It's the only thing that really lets it down a little bit is the out-of-box aesthetics. Anyway, let's test out that pose. So when it does come to the overall posability on the high-grade Atlas, this definitely is not an all-rounder. It's not perfect, but what it can do, it can do in a very unique kind of way, which is par for the course for the design. It's meant to be based on some underwater Xeonic suits, so it has some odd joints. So that means we have some odd double jointed elbows and knees in this so that means the knee bend bends at the upper leg and the lower leg with a big old knee segment in between them that does mean that some poses look a little bit on the awkward side but it means that other poses do look over the top and cool so it is a mixed bag the shoulders are a little bit limited and hold it back a little bit but on the whole it's a lot of fun to pose especially when you throw the sub arms on now for a 2017 kit this is quite good for me i will give it silver tier however it's not the greatest kit around it's marred by some really bad color separation in regard to how detailed the design this was it was very experimental I guess of Bandai to approach this really over the top design with high grade but what they did they did well but you will have to put the extra effort in yourself but besides that it's a solid kit and one I love and adore and is going right up on my shelf anyway I got mine through Bayou you can too as always thank you so so much for watching make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews and I will see you next time Once again, this video right here, and none of these videos would be possible without each and every single one of you guys who watches my videos. And special thanks to those of you who are supporting me over on Patreon and here on the channel memberships, including Ten Soldier YT, Caleb Engelhart, Dashil Marmion, Go Little Rockstar, Joe, Lawrence Seahack, Orgy59061, and Van Fawn.